guys. I figured because the last entry was me being frustrated, I would try to do something happier this time. You also may notice that I am wearing the same clothes as the last time. That's because... If you're wondering about it, I replaced all the sounds on my phone with me screaming. So if you're curious about the mental state of your grandfather, don't, don't look at that piece of information. Anyway, uh, what was I saying? I'm wearing the same clothes as the last entry because I'm filming them on the same day to be more efficient. And I'm too lazy to change my clothes to complete the illusion that this is a different day. So I think the lesson that we could all learn here is that I'm too lazy to put the effort in to change my clothes for my grandchildren's sake. Yeah. So last night I went to one of my best friend Logan's house. And uh, he, he had me help him fix some computer stuff that he was having problems with. And we were talking, and he's going to be going to college in Oregon soon, so we're trying to hang out as much as we can for right now. And we went out to this rope swing that he has in his backyard. It, it sounds weird, but this, like, this one rope swing has been like the one constant in our lives, where whenever we're bored, we'll go out and play on it. No matter who's fighting, we can always, like... Swing on the rope swing. We were talking really, really late, and then right before I left at like midnight, he said, hey, do you want to go to the rope swing for old times' sake? So I did, and we were walking out, just the two of us alone in the dark, all the way across his property to this rope swing. It reminded me of the story from when we were both sophomores, and I figured I'd tell it to you guys. I spend the night at his house for whatever reason. We're kids, we want to hang out. And we decided like, oh, let's go ahead and play on the rope swing. And we went out in the dark. When you go outside, it's kind of creepy because it's so dark and we're both like kids and we're scared of dumb things. We're trying to keep our composure together and walk and pretend like we're not scared because we're sophomores now. We can't be scared of the dark. That's lame. We go past this creepy old barn that's like creaking as we walk by and you just look in and you get shivers down your back and we're walking, just, okay, focus, go to the rope swing, go to the rope swing, it'll be fine. We get to the rope swing and we're kinda, you know, we're fake laughing, like, ha ha, ha, this is fun, no, we're having fun right now, ha. Uh. But inside, both of us are terrified because it's so dark and we're just alone out in the forest on this rope swing and every single sound. There's this game that my group of friends always play, it's just, like the what if game. You come up with some kind of ridiculous or gruesome or funny situation that probably wouldn't happen and you say, what if this happened? That's it. We're not that creative when we make games, but that's what we do. An like, example of one that happens a lot is we're walking through a parking lot and I look over at Logan and say, Logan, what would you do if I just started floating away right now? And then he answers, well, I think I probably, I probably call the police first and then I'd start screaming. It's that easy. You just come up with some situation and it's amusing to think about what would happen if this happened. What would you do if right now I ripped off my face and revealed that I was a woman? Then I say I'd probably call the police and then start screaming. You getting it now? Anyway, so I look at Logan and I say, Logan, what would you do if we looked over there, way off there in the forest, and there was just a man standing there? I don't know. I think we'd run. But to be honest, I'm really not that scared about a person being out here. I'm actually really scared of aliens. And this was the moment that I knew that Logan and I were going to be best friends forever. Because the one thing that my entire childhood I had been afraid of was aliens. I had never been that scared of monsters, and I'd never been that scared of like serial killers and stuff. But I remember there was this movie called Signs that I watched when I was really little, and ever since I saw that movie, I was terrified of aliens because it was about these aliens that waited in your attic and then they tried to kill your family. And uh, it pretty much scarred me for the rest of my life. Then I was afraid of aliens for a really, really long time. Then, it was either in seventh or eighth grade, that fear was reaffirmed with this movie called The Fourth Kind which I also watched, and that terrified me. So now I was here in this moment in the dark with my best friend Logan on a rope swing in the middle of the forest, he talking about aliens and acknowledging that he was afraid of aliens, and that was my biggest fear. And then we both acknowledged that we had the same fear, and by acknowledging that we had the same fear, we acknowledged that that was a realistic fear. So we both froze and we stared at each other, and I nodded, me too. Then we have to assume that there is currently an alien chasing us, because we both talked about an alien chasing us. 
That's the only possible outcome of that situation, obviously, when you're a sophomore and you're afraid of the dark. So he looks at me and he says, Austin, do you want to go back inside? And I nod. Yeah, yeah, I want to go back inside. So you start walking slowly at first back towards the house, away from the forest, because there's an alien that's after us right now because we talked about it. And we keep going faster and faster and faster. And every single step, your brain is just drilling into you. Yes, yeah, there's definitely something right behind you. There's something chasing you. There's something chasing you right now. We keep running, we keep running, and then we run back into his house, close the door behind you, and then you breathe. Whew. Good job, Logan. We made it. We survived. We outran the alien. There's only one reasonable thing that you can do after you both calm down from your near-death experience out in the forest, and that's to go research the thing that was trying to kill you, apparently. So we go on his computer and we start Googling alien statistics and abduction stuff. This map that we found on the internet was colored by county, and every single county was a color, ranging from black to red. Black was, you probably won't get abducted here because no one's ever reported it. Red was, a lot of people have reported being abducted by aliens here, and you're probably gonna die if you enter this county. And, of course, on this map, Shasta County was red. So not only was there definitely an alien chasing us from that rope swing back to his house, but our home is in the middle of a giant red spot on the map. Of course, we're not gonna try to think of any explanation like maybe there's drunk rednecks in Shasta County that are gonna falsely report alien abductions. No, there's definitely real aliens that are going to abduct us at some point in the near future, and we need to prepare. Then his dad saw what we were looking at, told us that we should go to bed and stop worrying about that stuff. We went into his room and started telling alien stories, and he talked about this, this book that he read called Communion. That night was the most terrified I've ever been in my entire life about the possibility of aliens abducting me. So, so that's the story. We're, we're, we, we were dumb. We're still dumb, but we were dumber. And we psyched ourselves out and, and tried to, you know, like, convince ourselves that we just... Being afraid is really easy, especially when you're really young. And the cool thing is, last night, we went out to the rope swing in the middle of the night. A night just like the night a couple of years ago when we freaked ourselves out about aliens. And we were just talking. We, we talked, we walked out of the rope swing, we swang around. I don't know if swang is the right word. Is swang a word? Swang is a word now. I don't care. Swang. We swang. And we were just talking about life, girlfriends, him moving to another state for school soon, kind of worrying about that. And then we talked about the alien story. We, we sat there on the swings and we kind of had this little like nostalgic moment remembering, oh, remember when, when we got freaked out by the alien here? And we talked about it and that was it. I think the coolest thing about last night though was that I wasn't scared. Which I think that says something about how much you grow up in like short periods of time. I mean, that was sophomore year, which seems like a really long time ago. And I was terrified of aliens. Now, not even slightly. I think the whole idea is ridiculous, obviously. And of course we're not going to be abducted by aliens. Because <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> the two midnight rope swing stories with Logan are almost like bookends of our friendship. Not that it's going to be over now, obviously, but, but this point in our life, he's moving to another state. I'm probably not going to see him that much. We're still going to be friends, but I'm not going to see him as much as I have the past three or four years. It's kind of having, it's cool having those two moments with a person like that, where in the beginning we're kind of becoming good friends, and we're both terrified of the same thing and freaking out about aliens. And then now, where we're both adults and we're both not afraid anymore. We're going in different directions in our lives. And then everything in between that, all of the, all of the times that I spent the night or we went on like adventures, uh, trespassing places or going to these hot springs in the middle of the night or a backpacking trip to the top of a mountain, all of that stuff happened in here, surrounded by being terrified of aliens and realizing I'm not afraid at all. Together, we had been through so much, and we had both gotten over our ridiculous fears. And now we're going in different directions. The perfect, like, metaphor for how much you can change with a person. And I think that's, that's kind of cool. Uh, anyway, that's my story for this one. I didn't script it, and I kind of unintentionally got really serious at the end. So I apologize if you were just looking for... 
for story time and nothing else. Anyway, uh, I'll talk to you guys next time. If you grandchildren see me in the near future, come over to my house. We should build a, a Lego tower or something. If Legos still exist, I think they'll still exist. If they still exist, let's build a Lego tower. If not, we'll make Legos. I don't know how, but we'll do it. I believe in us. See you guys.